Bizarre Baghdad. I'm still like, empty your fucking hand. <laughs> Play a balance. Leering souls is value. Out of the graveyard. Oh, I should probably be drafting the souls. Hey, RJ Milroy. Thanks for the sob. Thanks for the 27 months. Appreciate the sob. You might need a uh, Mind's Desire or a draw spell in there to get enough store on Papa Banks. Doretti's also doing loot things. What if we don't see a bazaar? I mean, what if any of your drafts don't work out? What if any of your drafts ever don't work out? What happens? You lose. You lose a little bit. It's not the end of the world. Everyone always has that question. What if we don't see the card? Then we drafted around a card we didn't see. Shucks. Oh, shit. What, what if you pack one, pick one, and never call and never see the never see the channel? Life goes on. Life goes on is the answer. Oh man, unholy diver has some gifted subs here. I gotta think. I gotta think here for a second. I'm gonna. I'm gonna shout out everybody a second. But I gotta think if I want Academy versus Doretti versus Bribery. Oh shit! Maybe I just want Clamp for these lingering souls. Let's clamp it up. Hey. Oh, shit, what if we don't see the card? We get pick third pick. What then? Oh shit! What up? Wheel of Fortune. Mull Drifter. Scarab God's interesting. Does Scarab God count as Reanimator? Oh, shit, or like Lark? I feel like Lark is not a reanimator spell, but it could work well in like a weird bizarre shell. Yeah, Unholy Diver, thank you for gifting 10 gifted subs. Congratulations to Ray Q, Smuckles, to Level 10 Magic, to Yo That's Fresh, to Gui TW, to Wayside Khan, to Snorlax is my spirit animal, to Jay Dalgish, to Disposable Hero, to Lou Mason 12, and to the Cox 207. Congrats, folks. Is interesting. Hey, Warston, thanks for the sub, thanks for the 32 months. I think bringing back creatures feels like reanimating. I feel like when people are talking about reanimator spells, they're not talking about Lark, they're talking about like Animate Dead. SW Reese thinks the resub thinks the 17 months and Worston thinks the sub thinks the 32 months. Worston says, Sir Barrington, watch out! There's a fucking weirdo in front of you. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Hey, Kemi Cal thinks the 65 months. Untap the bazaar. More activations. Spectral and clamp is good, but spectral seems like impossible to cast. Seems like an issue. Yeah, I thought about the Tez. I mean, has a lot though. Four mana is also a lot. I wasn't really happy about any of the cards there. Kind 
Castle for Colas. Yeah, just, just pay six. Just pay six, get three one ones. The best rate possible! Yeah, the idea behind Lingering Souls was that we're actually going to be playing Black for it. Ooh, Master of Death. Master of Death's like one of the more important cards of this step because it lets us activate Bazaar to be a Faithless Looting every turn. Dark Ritual, Tritacorus, Chupacabra are the options here. Let's go Dark Ritual. Yeah, we just drafted Good Storm. Let's draft Weird Storm. <laughs> Let's fucking weird it up. Dreddy's an option. Forge Master plays well with Emery. And Emery plays well, kind of well with the Bazaar. Devault Sweet. Dreddy Sweet. Mardu or four color? Who knows? Who knows? Like, we don't actually have to play blue for Master of Death, right? It can just be a card that chills in the graveyard and every every turn we pay a life to put it in our hand. And we're not playing blue just for Emery. I kind of like Spoiler's Copter. Lotus Petal is an option, too. Season Pyromancer does something similar to a Bizarre Baghdad activation. You don't know what we're doing? That's alright, neither do I. <laughs> Same boat, friend. Yeah, let's get this copter in here. Another artifact for Emery. You like Devon Death? We could play this. It's gonna wheel, though. Hello, Ragavan. Oh, Uro is interesting. Uro is fucking interesting with Bazaar. The double green seems hard, though. The double green seems tricky. We got the Metamorphos. It'll be so easy. So Excavator is a Crucible effect for Bazaar Baghdad. Kind of nice. Land tax. Land tax works with bizarre. I don't know if I want to have white mana in this mana base though. Chrome Mox seems like too much of a good thing. We're already pitching a lot of cards to bizarre. Could just grab a signet. A little boring. But it works. Oh, let's draft Inky. Something for Dreddy to rebuy him. Oh, but that's Reanimator. Right? Isn't that Reanimator? You can't play any Reanimator spells. Does that does that disclude Dreddy? Does that is Emery a reanimation spell? Fuck. Am I am I fucking this up? Kinda? Yeah, right? Kinda? Who fucking knows? Emery's cast. Do I have to cut this Duretti? I wish I thought about it before I drafted Duretti. There's another card there that I kinda liked. Wood of Whittles is sweet. Yagmoth's Will is sweet. We do have a Dark Ritual for the will. And it plays well with Mana Morphos. Oh shit, what up? Is 
Sun Titan's interesting. Hey, Rogan Hulk Hogan thinks the sob thinks the 13 months. You got a promotion this week? Hell yeah. Congrats, Rogan. You ate breakfast burritos to soothe the hangover. Hell yeah. Much love indeed. Should I get a twin? Should I just like take to see for exiting? Lightning Bolt's interesting. You like Blood, Blood Raiden? We can play Blood Raiden. That's his Oracle's tempting. Dragon's Rage Channeler's tempting. I think I'm just grabbing this Heath. Although the Heath doesn't really get anything besides forests right now. Let's take the Channeler. Why do you like Pass's Oracle? It takes you a lot of bizarre activations to mill yourself with Pass's Oracles. I don't think that I don't think that happens very often. We do have Wheel, I guess. gives you infinite infinite grim lava mancer activations I just want the land though it's kind of hoping we get an actual factual crucible so we can cut the excavating I don't actually really want to play green here I'd be way happier just sticking to Grixis colors because that's what we have the mana base for him on the other hand that's an Oko if we take in the Deceiver Exarch, we'd have Splinter Twin now. Expressive Iteration's interesting. Bizarre refreshes the top of our library for Citadel. Resembling, but still not radar waves have been bouncing off the Earth. Coming from someplace outside, like the moon or Mars, for instance? Originating on some sphere outside. Not the moon or Mars. Any known planet. Hmm. Wasteland well, is interesting for excavator. It's no strip mine, but it is interesting. I think I'm describing Dark Slick. This is not Legacy Cube. Tomb for Bizarre and then get it back with Excavator. That's a line. I usually do count Bizarre as a spell, yeah. Sylvan Library can like fill up your hand for Bizarre Baghdad. Very painful, but uh, it does work. And then Grim Monolith would be another artifact to work with Emery and such. 
which we're a little light on right now, actually. A little light on artifacts. Yeah, let's take the monolith here. Hey, Red-Eyed Skink thinks the 36 months, the 3 years, and Key Winnet thinks the 44 months, and two. Let's throw a Cruxa in here. Cruxa is way more like our kind of mana than that uh, that arrow that we passed. Oh shit, what up? Oh shit, what up? Hey, Righteous Yuri thinks the sub thinks the 57 months. Righteous says, don't forget to prime! Yeah, it'd be a shame to forget. I kinda like Wormcoil here. Let's jam Wormcoil in. Hazard's funny with a uh, bazaar. <laughs> or Tassiger, maybe. Golos gets bizarre. I kind of like that. Interesting pile of cards we're accumulating. <laughs> Do you want LED? <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> why not? Why wouldn't I want that? <laughs> I'm looking at Expressive Iteration, My Desire, and Tireless Tracker. Iteration's pretty damn good. Desire would make the Yogg's Will make a little bit more sense. But even then, we're just like putting in like a couple six drops or something. <laughs> I don't know. Of the last deck? No, no, no. We still have Yogg's Will and Dark Ritual and LED in here. It's not the opposite. Fortune. I might cut that one. Oh yeah, we should play the Sacred Foundry for a uh, for Golos activation. You think Bazaar is the worst card in the deck? How dare you? How dare you? I think it's a lot better if we've got green and blue. I think we have no playables too. Don't look like this. The splash for Emery seems free enough though. Oh yeah! Hey Jorbs, hey Jorbs Raiders, how y'all doing? The mighty Jorbs is here to dig. 
Hey, thanks, Tibalt. Thanks for giving him the shout out. Anyone that's following me that isn't following Jorbs yet, you're fucking up. You are fucking up. Jorbs is great. Dig, relic, dig. Yeah, I mean, the mana is doable with Oko. Like, Ragavan hits can give us green for, for the Oko, and then they've mana Morphos here, too. So even if you just play, like, a single forest for wooded foothall, foothills, you can still play it. The thing that hurts about cutting green is you lose the Excavator, which plays well with the Bazaar. But this mana is a lot more clean, a lot cleaner. A lot of these shit artifacts that we grab make less sense without Emery, though. He crushed 128 hearts in 30 days. Oh man, that's so many hearts. What a fucking, what a fucking crusher. Dreddy's good with Bizarre. Dreddy is good with Bizarre. The issue is the Stip said no reanimation. And Dreddy kind of reanimates, huh? We could cut Inferno Titan to bring a card in, bring in like Emery in. Hey Volf with the 26 months, Volf says, pretty good game, except for the Jaw Worm. I cannot for the life of me understand how the devs put out patch after patch without nerfing this ridiculous enemy. Might as well play game on the first floor. Runs are one and loss based. What's that? There's a novel in there somewhere, Wolf. Yeah, I still want to play this Emery. Let's cut the Brainstorm and the Iteration and fit the Emery, Oko, and Excavator in here. Which means cutting Inferno Titan. And I don't fucking know. Yeah, maybe that's just fucking impossible. You'd have to cut cards that work well with the Clamp, right? You'd have to cut, like, the PNK and the Rebel Master. Which is probably fine. Those are like weird, weirdly mid-range cards that don't actually interact with Bizarre at all. And then we'd be adding a couple cards that play well with Bizarre. A little closer to the step. Not sure about the Sacred Foundry just for uh, Golos. I guess it casts Lingering Souls too. Alright. So for natural red sources, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that kind of Boros Signet. I think just a single mountain is already fine. And then black sources, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight's pretty good. And this is enough for blue. We've got like two and a half blue cards. Three, four, five. Yeah, that's enough. And this is enough for green. Yeah, three not counting like Manamorphos and stuff. How much short is that? I'm just gonna play one more swamp and one more mountain. And call that a day. Yeah, just like that. You don't think the clamp is good? The clamp hits lingering souls. Dragon's Rage Channeler, Ragavan, Empty the Warren's Tokens, and it's an artifact to bring back with Emery. It's certainly worse without Ravel Master and PNK, but that's alright. Doesn't have to be the best card in the deck. Something's gotta be the worst card. My nomination is this fucking mana base. I don't know what an Eli 5 is.
explain like your five. Uh, the draft we, we were supposed to build around Bazaar Baghdad, which we did, but not draft reanimation stuff. So usually when you play Bazaar Baghdad, you're playing cards like Reanimate and what what. Instead, we have to play cards like Excavator to get lanes back from our graveyard, or like Master of Death is a card that you can loot away with Bazaar Baghdad and then pay a life to return to your hand. So rather than use Bazaar Baghdad to um to like power out some busted reanimator thing, we're instead trying to use it for value. It's not an easy step. That's for sure. This ain't the Lily down the monkey, but even if they play a blocker for the Ragavan here, we can still like throw it to the clamp and draw some cards. Yes! Yes, Shadow Creature, yes! So my options here are play the Lingering Souls and set up for clamp drawing, or just cast Wheel of Fortune on turn two. <laughs> <laughs> Which has its pros and cons. The con is that the opponent only has four cards in hand, so it probably helps them more. The pro would be I would get to dump all this shit and look at more cards. <laughs> These are good cards to dump. The whole deck is good cards to dump. But I kind of like the, the Clamp plus Layering Souls thing. I think that's going to show me a lot of cards. I mean, that's already eight cards, right? <laughs> Another Looting Away Tangle Wire. Because we made Layering Souls tokens. Valid. So we need a land, and then I'll just like flash back to the Lingering Souls. Now I'm like, do I play the Samarine? Do I clamp again? Let's clamp again. Sad looking academy. Let's hit them before we figure out what we're doing here. I like the idea of getting the crux in my graveyard. Just have it set up to come back next turn. A mox jet, don't mind if I do. They're scooping. We win! Our bizarre bag dad deck won game one! Glad I didn't cast that Wheel of Fortune. We would have drawn them into like that Mox and they would have popped the fuck off. Yeah, the creature has Shadow Burnash. Shadow creatures can only block other shadow creatures. There's not a lot of creatures with shadow and magic, but there's that one. <laughs> it's a good one to because it's got shadow, it's also impossible for you to block, which means it's a really good one to like put a sword on or something, put a piece of equipment on, and go to town. It also loots on connecting, so you see it in blue black reanimator decks. And then some people just like it to filter.
God, this deck is such a pile. I'll keep it. Smuggler's Copter might do a bizarre impression. Strange trade. Yeah, I mean, they made the trade because they didn't want me to get Dragon's Rage channeling triggers. They wanted to trade before I got value there. Ooh. Well, Bizarre.deck wins the first round. I feel like our opponent had some troubles. Some mana troubles two games in a row. We win! This deck did just 2-0. It might have been leaning very hard on turn one Ragavan both games. Something tells you the opponent doesn't like the monkey. I mean, they have one of their own. Play our monkey until turn two. That second game. I think their hex drink was so brutal too. Hex drink is also pretty nutty. You don't need this extra trio. Why not? Bizarre is banned in Legacy. Card's obviously quite good. <laughs> and then we got and then we got Oko, Ragavan. Yogmoth's will <laughs> for some reason. We got Yogmoth's will in here too. Yeah, we got Yog Will plus LED. How do you lose? How do you lose? All that and a Draco Lich, an Ebon Death Draco Lich. Chandler, go! You think this end looks quite good? I think that's kind of a stretch. The mana looks reasonable, which I'm sure not all of our hands will have. But we don't. it's not like we have like a critical mass of artifacts for Emery, right? We've got seven artifacts in the deck, one's in our hand. Ooh, I think that's a little bit better than the Signatom. Maybe a lot of it better. I want to get these creature lands into play, but I think the signet's probably better.
Ooh, that lingering souls mill. That lingering souls mill, though. Next time we're going to flashback Lingering Souls and play Tassiger, I think, is the plan. Urza coming in hot. How many lands are in this fucking deck? I should have been the Grim Monolith for Emery to get back. We can do that next turn. I guess if I cast the Grim Monolith, then I get a Dragon's Rage Channeler trigger. That's kind of good. Top. <laughs> Top that one. All appears to be working somehow. Hmm. Suddenly less excited about casting that Wheel of Fortune. I guess I can clear the Narset. So I kind of get the feeling that they're also a storm deck. Oh well. Well, we drew bizarre. Oh, I only have eight cards left. Should be a little careful with those Dragon Ra Dragon's Rage Channeler uh... <laughs> thingamabobbers. Maybe I don't even activate the Bizarre. No creatures died this turn, so we can't rebuy Ebb and Death that way. But we can leave up the LED in case they kill something.
And the opponent's graveyard is Memory Jar Time Spiral. I don't think they're just playing Urza. <laughs> Oh, I can play the Evan Death. What died this turn? Oh, I, I Yogg's Willed. That's how I can play it. That's funny. Let's just Cruxa and... Empty the warrants here. You all ready to lose to like the smallest fucking brain freeze of all time? I mean, we'd beat Damnation. That's all they had. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, because we have the Ebon Death in the graveyard. So the Damnation here, we can just crack LED for Triple Black, play the Ebon Death. Alright, I have to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Keep, I keep. Sorry about the delay there, folks. Can Ragavan connect is the next question. Oh my god. I'm just the luckiest person ever. I could Dark Ritual into Everflowing Chalice Lingering Souls. I kinda like that. Milling with uh, Dragon's Rage channel is really easy with this thing, because everything's bad, so you just bin it, whatever it is. Note that flashing back Lingering Souls does a uh, room of delirium. They got three of my creatures with that Ashiok. <laughs> How many creatures are even in my deck? <laughs> they got three of them? Do I flash back the Lingering Souls or no? Ooh, I want that on top. Is it a pass? Keeping the Lingering Souls in the graveyard keeps the Dragon's Rage a 3 3, so it's like the same amount of power. But then if they play a Sweeper, if they like Toxic for 3 here, I'll still have some value there. Still have some juice in the caboose. As they say. Do they say that? 
Do I have enough mana to put the copter, lingering souls, and activate the fumarole? I do. I do have enough mana. Perfect. Well, we are now two oh four oh. this masterpiece <laughs> with this absolute masterpiece the previous deck didn't drop a game so right now we're 10 and 0 in games this is wrong how's this wrong <laughs> what's wrong about this <laughs> yeah someone asked me with the the storm deck they were like, they were like is this the best deck that you're gonna draft this season I think Eric Virgo asked that I was like, obviously not. I haven't drafted around Bazaar yet. Turn one library. to chill on the Manamorphose, huh? Next turn, I think I metamorphose off of Black Lake Cliffs and Grimonolith and float uh, blue green. Never mind. Next turn, I think I do something different than that. Trigger into a 3 3, but maybe I want them to invest man into it first. Maybe just like make a food and then they invest man into it. I chomp on tap, turn into a 3 3. Or I could even like not chomp. I don't know. We did win the second match, yeah. A 
I could have Manamorphosed into the Oko. The reason not to Manamorphose is if you think there's a chance that you want to Manamorphose into Empty the Warrens, which could happen. Certainly could happen. So even though we don't have a bizarre this game, our cards are kind of like doing bizarre things. Like we still have some redundancy in the deck. Dragon's Rage Channeler milling us, Emery milling us, Looter Scooter doing like loots. Bizarre like loots. And then we have been using our graveyard. So even though we haven't activated bizarre yet, I think the theme of bizarre step has still been working out. Once board's starting to get scary, Starting to get into Crater Hoof range. Do I play Emery just to mill? Yeah. I wanted to last turn, but playing the Excavator, getting a land back, and offering a double block on Hexdrinker seems better. So I could let Oko die and then Manamorphose and use Dragon Rage Channeler to kill her Garrick. I think I'd rather keep an Oko around. Exalted absolutely works with those good creatures. They didn't have an ignoble hierarch when I was playing out last turn. Interesting. What do you think of an only diver? I'm probably on board. What shall I metamorphose to build storm count? Rebuy that at Braid. Well, that removes a lot of my mana generation for next turn. 
unfortunate. Yeah, let me do a diving. So we can go Manamorphose into Yogg's Will and get a lot of stuff back. But we don't have our Empty the Warrens. If we had the Emery, we'd have like two Lion's Eye Diamonds activations, which would be a lot more tempting to me. We'd be like Borderline, Golos Activate. But we don't have our Emery anymore, unfortunately. So we'd just be playing like two, three drops. We'd just be like replaying Oko and... I guess Grim Monolith gives us one more mana. So we could go like Oko... And then either Emery or Excavator plus Dragon's Rage Channeler, if the mana works out. The other line is just like Pass and Ebb and Death. I kind of like that. As this Pass here. I think there's a good chance we just die to fucking, um... Crater Hoof here anyway. Well, if you put Empty into the yard after Gogmoth's Will is resolved, it's going to get exiled, perhaps. So we would just have plus two more chances to draw Empty from the Manamorphose and then replay the Manamorphose. Which I didn't think was quite good enough. So I'm giving it one more turn, one more draw step, see if we find something interesting. The Swift Spear in their deck is interesting. A lot of damage. 23, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13. Yeah, as much as I like the the idea of clearing the Garrick. Hmm. 
a Shrek LED first. Should I just Golos activate? I'm just fucking Golos activate here. I have exactly enough mana, right? Golos activate's funny. I don't know if it's good, but it's funny. Live the dream. Yeah, let's live the dream. Figure out if it's better to play lane from your hand or from the graveyard. I don't think it matters. Tassiger and a Wheel of Fortune. I guess I'll play the wheel. I've seen better Golos hits. <laughs> I've seen better. <laughs> yeah, we we're hoping for Empty the Warrens. We got our storm count up to 10 there. That's not bad. It's not bad for this deck. <laughs> Sure, huh? Hey, Honda's better thanks to the solid things for 13 months. We picked up our first loss. First loss of the league. It hurts! It hurts! So I kind of want to become a little bit more controlling in this matchup. shit like Inferno Titan. I still probably want Steam Vents, huh? In case I want to cast the Master of Death. I don't think I need Dark Slick or that other shit. Something like this. Four O is impressive. What about four and one? <laughs> What about four and one? Because that's where we are right now. Yeah, it's, it's fine, Diver. Totally fine. I 
The issue is the Rabble Master doesn't even seem very good against them. But Wheel of Fortune seems disastrous. With them being, like, kind of aggressive. I guess if we wheel into empty, it could still work out. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, shit, what up? Oh, shit, what up? Hey, I'm Holy Diver. Thanks for gifting five subs. Congratulations to Cross Cross, to Din oh, Gil Monk, shit, to Reaction 445, to Ratker, and to Spilo Pleuria 11. Oh, shit, Congrats, folks, and thanks, Diver. Oh, shit, what up? Oh, my. Bizarre would be, like, actively good in this hand. Oh, shit, what up? Bizarre would make all kinds of sense. Depending on what the Manamorphos drew, I might have been interested in firing off Yogg's Will there. Oh, he's got a swamp, so. Yeah, I'll just make some tokens, whatever. No harm, no foul. Thunder Mom. They need that Igna Wolf, the second red. I think I've only got like one removal spell in this whole deck though. Another stiff lined up on rain. Heaven Death is not used in vintage Badrick Senpai. Neither is Master of Death, I don't think. I think it's he's played in a bizarre deck. Not every. Thunder My Hulkite is also not used in vintage, right? When something's a vintage cube, it just means that it's a cube with vintage legal cards. So those are the, that's the pool that you have selected. That's the pool you have to build your cube out of. If you do a cube of modern legal cards, you're just telling people that there's no dual lands and power and stuff that you would find in like legacy or vintage cubes, respectively. People get confused about that a lot, and people are like, well, these aren't vintage cards. No one plays Fauna Shaman in vintage. But if you just like only took, literally took vintage playable cards and put them all in a cube, you wouldn't have a very good cube. Nothing would work with each other. The decks are too linear, right? Master Death sees a lot of play. Yeah, that makes sense. I realized it was probably pretty good pitching like forces and stuff in your bizarre decks. 
Only halfway through my comment. This Thunder Ball is a 2 turn clock. Probably gonna rock me real well. Should I just bring back Crux again? The issue here is that they've got jumpers for Cruxa, and the Thunder Maw is a two-turn clock. Where they attack for six and then attack for six. So the only way we can win, I think, is if we like very specifically top deck. What was it, Bone Crusher? Bone Shredder. My one removal spell. We need to draw that. Maybe not good enough, depending on what they're playing here. Maybe I shouldn't have brought back the Crux Head yet, just in case we found Damnation. Oh, we're getting being fired again. Fair enough. Fair enough. The old Thunder Wand of being fired, basically Splinter Twin. Yeah, of course, Senpai. It's a common question. It's a common question. Some people avoid that by, instead of calling it Vintage Cube, they just call it, like, Powered Cube or versus Unpowered Cube. Cube. Well, that doesn't make any sense because they're like there's like ten different moto cubes. Not that many, but there's a lot. There's no one moto cube. They tap. They untap. They tap. They untap. Ponza cube? Yeah, that sounds awful. <laughs> that sounds heinous. Opponent's having fun over there. They untap again. Just having a grand old time. Demonstrating a loop. <laughs> <laughs> I have infinite actions, sort of. I tap. I untap. Let me look at spoilers. For some reason, when my opponents start doing nothing for forever, and then when I bring up spoilers, they tend to make a play. Maybe that's just like the amount of time that it takes me to bring up spoilers. Yeah, I'm excited to play Season Pyromancer in Historic. Heck of a card, that Season Pyromancer. A lot of people have been talking about Static Discharge. It's sort of like, um... It's sort of like Kindle, right? 
Only at sorcery and three damage. What if you can recycle this static discharge? It keeps growing. Yeah, hardened scales. Hardened scales is a fucked up card. Are historic only. Oh, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. The art for Boneyard Aberration is kind of cool. Weird spines. When it dies, exile it. If you do, conjure three reassembling skeleton cards into your graveyard. Well, that's some good value. It is a five mana three three. Well, that's some good value. Sky Shroud Ambush, what did the green? Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. When the creature you control wins the fight, draw a card. I assume winning the fight means your creature lives. And their creature does not. <laughs> I, I assume. Veteran Charger actually looks good. <laughs> your league completed, you've completed the league. They finally played their main fire. 